Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome this day to Central United Methodist Church. My name is Amy Seifer, and I am the pastor here uh, at Central, along with Pastor Liz Evans. And we are glad that you are with us for worship this day. Uh, as a reminder for those of you who are joining us here in person, uh, please keep your mask on, and as you participate, please do so quietly and softly so uh, germs don't go flying around the room. If you are joining us uh, virtually today online, a special welcome to you as well. We would ask that you would please uh, let us know that you are worshiping with us by leaving your name in the comment section, either on Facebook or on YouTube. Uh, so we can make sure that we include you uh, in today's worship participation. A big day uh, here for worship today at Central. A couple of different things. First, we are celebrating and participating in World Communion Sunday. Uh, this is a Sunday that uh, was actually started by a Presbyterian minister who uh, wanted to to um, reflect on the unity that we share as brothers and sisters of Christ, no matter what door or what name of the church is above the door that we go into, and no matter where we are in the world. And so uh, every time we participate in communion, we join with our fellow saints uh, in the Lord's kingdom. But today is a special day that we are mindful of everywhere, everyone everywhere who is uh, joining us at the Lord's table this day. So as we um, come to that time in our worship service, uh, if you are here, um, you will come forward. We're going to ask for you to keep yourself socially distanced as much as you can. Um, I will hand you a piece of bread via um, a pair of tongs, and Pastor Liz will have uh, self-contained cups of juice for you to take uh, to to use. Uh, there is a basket on either end of the chancel uh, for you to put your used communion cups in as well. Uh, if you are joining us uh, virtually, this would be a good time for you to run to the kitchen and get a piece of bread, some juice. It can be a cracker and water. It can be anything uh, that you happen to have around that will symbolize the body and blood of Christ for you later on in the service. And uh, we will have a, a chance for those elements to be consecrated, uh, even virtually, and for you to be able to participate with those here and those around the world uh, in World Communion Sunday. We're also beginning a new worship series today called Earn, Save, and Give. Um, this is a, a series that is based off of a sermon that John Wesley preached um, about the use of money. And some people might be saying, Pastor Amy, you know, there are so many other things going on in the world right now. Why are we going to talk about money? Well, it's because of these issues that are going on in our world uh, that we're going to talk about money. Wesley had three simple rules for money. Earn all you can, save all you can, and give all you can. And in times of anxiety, in times of uncertainty, uh, we tend to close in and fold in on ourselves, and that includes our financial habits as well. And so we're going to go back to our Wesleyan roots and learn a little bit about what John Wesley thought the purpose of money was. No, he did not think it was bad. Uh, he thought it was a tool to be used uh, for us personally and for the church. And so we're going to spend the next few weeks talking about earning, saving, and giving. At this time, I would invite you to prepare your hearts and your minds for worship this day. If you are at home, perhaps you'd like to light a candle or find something, um, a picture or a cross, something that will help you uh, feel like you are part of us uh, here um, in person and uh, with fellow Christians around the world. Uh, I would ask our worship leader, Becky Harris, to come and lead us in our call to worship. The words uh, for your responses will appear on the screen. The heavens are telling the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of God's hands. Day and night return endlessly, showing God's steadfast love. 
The sun shines upon the earth, reflecting God's light. The law of God is perfect, reviving the soul. Decrees of God bring wisdom, making wise the pure of heart. The heavens are telling the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of God's hands. Come, let us worship the living God. If you would join me in our opening prayer. Almighty God, as we listen to your spirit, may the words of our mouths and the thoughts of our hearts be accepted in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Our opening song this day is Here I Am to Worship. It might be a new one for several of you, but it's pretty easy to catch on to. Uh, and so I invite you to join in our opening song. Good morning, I'm Liz Evans and I'm the pastor of youth. As we enter into a time of prayer this morning, I'd like to lift up some of our prayer concerns. We remember Sarah today who has had a reoccurrence of breast cancer. We remember Andy Hansen's parents who are facing medical issues. Nathan who has been diagnosed with ALS. Aunt Cecilia, who is Missy Combs' aunt, Stacy Reisner's Aunt Elizabeth, and everyone at Rolling Hills Nursing Home in Topeka who are dealing with a COVID outbreak, and Grayson, who is Larry and Karen Puckett's great nephew, who is having an MRI to determine a diagnosis of retinal vascular disease. Are there any other prayer concerns for us this morning? Thank you, Brenda. Um, so Brenda wants to pray for um, all of those across our country um, to, to be responsible 
with um, masks and social distancing. Thank you, John. I forgot to mention to you this morning. Uh, I received an email late last night uh, that Chon Ki Park, the pastor of the Korean congregation that meets here, um, has been diagnosed with COVID-19. Um, now, there's nothing to worry about. He has not been here the last several weeks. He's been preaching at a church in Wichita, so there's no concern for us um, because he has not been here. Uh, but let's please keep Chonky in our prayers uh, this week. He's just having some mild symptoms, but he is uh, doing well and uh, um, wanted to let you know uh, that he's thinking about all of you. And um, we will see him as soon as it is safe for him to be back here. Yes, we, we pray for the president and um, all those who are dealing with a COVID-19 diagnosis. Praying for the end of the pandemic. Yes. So we pray for um, Howard. We pray for your uh, two sisters and brother. Yes. Yeah. Um, and in their final stages. At this time, Becky will lead us in the prayer of confession. There will be a time after that for silent prayer, and then I will lead us in prayer. Holy God, we have ignored wisdom's cries. We have blinded ourselves to your truth and trusted our blurred vision. We have put our faith in our own righteousness rather than in the righteousness of your son. We have persecuted others out of ignorance and willful misunderstanding. Help us forsake our pride that we might have life and have it abundantly. Gracious and loving God, as we enter into this season of stewardship, we pray for grateful hearts that would give generously and freely. We pray for wisdom in managing our finances, that we would use what we've earned and what we've been given with love and gratitude. We pray for those who struggle to make ends meet for those who are out of work, for those who are homeless, for those without access to basic needs, and for those who might have a difficult relationship with money. We pray for their needs to be met and for a world that cares for them as we know you do. We pray also this day for all those around the world on this World Communion Sunday. When we are reminded that you have brought all of us closer together, despite the ways we insist on keeping one another at arm's length. We pray this morning for our world, that nations across the globe would work to support one another. 
We pray for those in other countries facing hardships we cannot fathom. We pray also for our country's relationship with the rest of the world, that it would be strengthened. Holy One, we also pray for those personal concerns that weigh heavy on our hearts this morning. We pray for those who grieve, that they would know comfort, for those who are sick or injured, that they would find healing, for those who are dying, that they would know peace, for those who are experiencing chaos, that they would know structure, for those who are lonely, that they would know love and support, for those who are just desperate for a break, that they would find rest. Be with all of us now, O oh God, whether we are gathered or scattered in your name. We pray all of these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our scripture today comes from Luke chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. And Jesus said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me a, an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, what will I do now that my master is taking the position away from me? I am not strong to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, How much do you owe my master? He answered, A hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it 50. Then he asked another, and how much do you owe? He replied, a hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and make it 80. And his master commanded the dishonest manager, uh, commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may be welcome, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in very little is faithful also in much, and whoever is dishonest in very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust you to the true riches. And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Thank you, Becky. Our second scripture lesson comes from 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 1 to 13. Solomon made a marriage alliance with Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he had finished building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall around Jerusalem. The people were sacrificing at the high places, however, because no house had yet been built for the name of the Lord. 
Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of his father David. Only he sacrificed and offered incense at the high places. The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the principal high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of the heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil, for who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor all your life. No other king shall compare with you. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of his holy word. This kind of seems like one of those too-good-to-be-true stories, doesn't it? I mean, when you think about it, God offers to give you anything you want. Anything you want. What would you ask for? What would be on your list? If God was going to give you anything you asked for, what would it be? Think about what you would ask for for a minute. And now how does that compare to what Solomon asked for? Solomon asked for wisdom. And we can all use a little bit more wisdom, right? I know I certainly could. We are living in unprecedented and uncertain times. We are still in the midst of of a COVID-19 pandemic, the information about it and what we should do, what we shouldn't do, seems to change from day to day. We don't have a clue when a vaccine will be available, and we have no idea when life will return to some form of normalcy, whatever that normalcy is going to look like. None of those things seem to be on the horizon anytime soon. As of today, we are 31 days from an election in a political climate that is so contentious that it has driven lifelong friends apart. It has caused us to be angry with our family members. It has caused us to just be angry and bitter in general. There are so many issues right now that divide us. And if you're like me, you might be feeling a little confused or frustrated or angry or anxious or sad or any other number of emotions that might be going through our feelings right now. Like I mentioned earlier, during times of uncertainty, it's a natural human tendency for us to play everything safe. We don't know What's going to happen? There are so many things that we can't control, and so the things that we can control, we just latch onto with our claws and we don't let go. We exhibit caution in just about 
every area of our lives when times are anxious and confusing. We don't make very many life decisions. We might stay closer to home, not take any trips. And many of us change our spending habits because we aren't sure what to expect. Remember, it was just about six months ago that the grocery stores had to limit the number of toilet paper packages we could buy. Those are the kind of things that manifest themselves during times of uncertainty. Who would have thought toilet paper? Now, my dad had a theory. His theory was you can never have too much toilet paper. It, it, there's wisdom in that kernel of advice when you think about it. But for people to go and have two and three grocery carts stocked with nothing but toilet paper, these are the kind of decisions that we make. I can't control what's going to happen, but by gosh, I can buy toilet paper. A little bit of a facetious tongue-in-cheek comment, but think about it. That wasn't that long ago. Right now, wisdom might be something that many of us would like a little bit more of, or, let's face it, a lot more of. But we don't always associate wisdom to our understanding of money and the role that money has in our lives. But it's important to have wisdom when we are talking about money. Because where are you going to store all that toilet paper? There's more to our relationship with money than knowing how much of it we have and deciding on what we're going to spend it on. There's always a temptation to become rich in things and poor in soul. And scripture makes it clear that there is a spiritual element in our relationship with our possessions. Jesus warns us in the reading that Becky shared with us from Luke that we can't serve two masters. We can't serve God and wealth. Now, how we use our money is no small things. It goes all the way to the heart of our relationship with God. If we claim Jesus is our Lord and Master, and yet our relationship with him has no impact on how we use the resources that he has given us, then there is a problem in our relationship with Christ. There's a trust issue. It's saying that you trust God to take care of everything in our life, provide every need that we have except for our financial needs. Now, this is where wisdom comes into play. And just to be clear, wisdom is different than knowledge. Knowledge is knowing that tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing that you don't put tomato in a fruit salad. Thank you. I got a little chuckle. There are so many methods to help you gain knowledge on how to manage your money. Google it. You'll find page after page after page. But for followers of Christ, this issue digs deeper, and it reaches further than simply gathering information. Christ warns us that where our treasure is, our heart is there also. Our attitudes about money and the priority that we place on our possessions are matters of the heart. They go to the core of our identity. And because of this, we need more than just information. We need wisdom. So how do we go about gaining this wisdom when it comes to our money? Well, we look, we head to the scriptures, and we ask for it. King Solomon didn't ask for wisdom just for himself. He shared it with those around him. We all know the stories of King Wisdom, the wisest king, or King Solomon rather, the wisest king there ever was. 
Another place we can look for wisdom in scriptures is the book of Proverbs. And the book of Proverbs begins this way. Their purpose is to teach wisdom and discipline, to help one understand wise sayings. They provide insightful instruction, which is righteous, just, and full of integrity. They make the naive mature, the young knowledgeable, knowledgeable and discreet. So these Proverbs tell us that wisdom begins with God. Here are a few of those Proverbs. Wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. The knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. The Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and and understanding. And they also tell us that given the choice between wisdom and wealth, we should always choose wisdom. Happy are those who find wisdom and those who gain understanding. Her profit is better than silver and her gain better than gold. Her value exceeds pearls. Her is referring to wisdom here. Her value exceeds pearls. All you desire can't compare with her. In her right hand is a long life. In her left hand are wealth and honor. Let's look at that one a little bit closer. In her right hand is a long life, and in her left hand are wealth and honor. That seems to be saying that wealth comes with wisdom, doesn't it? But the book of Proverbs isn't the only place where we can find wisdom, especially when it comes to attitudes about money. Jesus spoke on the topic of money more than any other topic. And perhaps that's because he understood how big of a problem it can be for us. In Matthew 25, he tells the story of the wicked servant who took what the master gave him and buried it in the ground. Jesus is showing us that it's wise to use our talents and our opportunities that come our way to earn an honest income. But he also says that it's foolish to bury our talents and never find productive ways to use them. He also told the story of the prodigal son who demands his inheritance from his father and then goes and squanders it on money, or excuse me, on things that he shouldn't have and living beyond his means. We're also given this promise about wisdom. James 1.5 tells us, anyone who needs wisdom should ask God, whose very nature is to give to everyone without a second thought, without keeping score. Wisdom will certainly be given to those who ask. Sometimes gaining wisdom comes through listening to others. And that's where Wesley's advice about money comes in. Now, for those of you who maybe confirmation was a long time ago, a little refresher course, John Wesley lived in the 18th century in England, and it was a time of major economic and social change. And the gap between wealthy and the poverty-stricken was getting larger and larger. Oh, wait a minute. That kind of sounds like right now, doesn't it? Wesley and his Methodist came along and offered hope for transformation in every part of life. The spiritual and personal disciplines that John Wesley practiced and taught enabled people in lower economic classes to become more responsible, to become better educated, and to become more prosperous. Some of them began began to accumulate wealth and started making some unwise choices. And Wesley responded to this by giving a sermon that has been come to come to be known as one of his classics. It's called The Use of Money. And in it he declared that the right use of money is an excellent branch of Christian wisdom. He acknowledged that money was something that was talked about a lot in the world, 
but it isn't something that's considered by God's chosen people in the world. And what he means is that something, it's something that still rings true today, that when it comes to money and possessions, we Christians tend to follow the way of the world rather than the way of God. Now, Wesley's reason for the sermon was not to raise funds for the church, but to equip Methodists to manage and use their money in the most faithful and effective ways. And again, he gave very, three very simple rules. Earn all you can, save all you can, give all you can. Now, we're used to churches talking about give all you can. And our stewardship is an important part, not only for our ministry here at Central, but it's an important part of our own spiritual disciplines. But we don't usually hear the church telling us to make all the money we can and to save all the money we can. So the idea with this sermon series is to give us all tools that we can use as we faithfully use the resources that we have been given by God. And so over the next few weeks, we're going to look at each of these rules in more detail. And as we visit and we reclaim this part of our Methodist heritage, we have the opportunity to discover the kind of wisdom that will help us grow in our own discipleship and allow us to continue making a difference in this congregation and in our community. So I leave you this day with a challenge. Last week it was a pop quiz. This week it's a little homework. We're going to go on a wisdom quest this week. And there's several different ways that you can do this. They are easy and simple things to do. I'm going to challenge you to be in worship, either here in person or online, every Sunday of this month during this sermon series. I'm going to challenge you to spend time in prayer and in Bible reflection each day. Um, Then I'm going to challenge you to discuss what you've been learning with someone each week. And then finally, to pray and ask God to give you wisdom in the use of money. So that's your challenge this week. I wish you good luck, and I look forward to seeing you next week as we learn more about earn all you can. Amen. If we have homework, it's going to take some energy, and energy requires a meal. And so at this time, we move into our celebration of World Communion Sunday. Again, remembering that we are all one body in Christ. I invite you to join in our communion hymn, One Bread, One Body. The words will be on your screen.
Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us in the name of that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You have made from one you have made from one every nation and people to live on all the face of the earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. He commissioned us to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth and to make disciples of all nations. And today his family and all the world is joining at his holy table. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with your church throughout the world and strengthen it in every nation and among every people to witness faithfully in your name by your spirit make us one with christ one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son jesus christ with the holy spirit in the in your holy church all honor and glory is yours almighty father now and forever Again, as you come forward, you will receive a piece of bread. If you need gluten-free options, we do have those available to you. And then uh, Liz will have a tray of, 
of cups for you to take. So if you would give us a moment to get hand sanitized and gloves on, uh, we will begin the feast momentarily.
if you would join me in prayer. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we prepare to depart from this time of, of worship to a time of service, a couple of announcements. Uh, first, allow me a moment to thank everyone for your continued support of our ministries here at Central United Methodist Church. Uh, we will consecrate the, the blessing or the gifts, the tithes and offerings that have come in this last week in a moment. Uh, but for uh, those of you who are wanting to uh, continue to support our ministries, a couple of different ways you can do that. Uh, if you are here in person, there's an offering plate uh, as you exit the sanctuary that you can put your gifts in. Uh, a number of you are mailing your, your checks and your uh, tithes and offerings in uh, to the church. We appreciate that as well. We also offer a way to give online. If you visit our website, lawrencecentral.org, there's a giving button that you can uh, click, and it provides you a, a secure way to uh, make contributions that way. Uh, so let us thank God uh, for the blessings that we have received this week and for the tithes and offerings received here at Central Receive our gifts this day, O God, that they may satisfy the needs of your people like water from an ever-flowing stream. Receive our thanks and praise, our industry and our love, that all might know your manifold blessings. Amen. A couple of announcements. Thanks to everyone who came out and uh, helped support our launch of Fourth Sunday Feast, uh, meal ministry to the students of KU. Uh, not as good of a turnout as we hoped. It was pouring down rain, and so um, we didn't have very many kids make their way down here unless they had a car to drive. Uh, but we did send about 30 meals uh, up with some of the leadership from Wesley KU, and they distributed the food up there. So I consider that a success because hungry kids were fed. Um, and so we will do this again in October. We're going to hope and pray for some better weather. Um, and it's been suggested that it's close to Halloween. Maybe we want to encourage a little Halloween dress up uh, in October. So we will get that uh, planned and get more information out to you. Um, again, if you're interested in helping with that ministry in any way, uh, coming to, um, to cook or to hand out food to the kids or... Um, sponsoring a monthly meal with a financial donation, please let me know. Uh, our book club also resumes tomorrow. We are looking at a book called When Helping Hurts and um, talking about how um, sometimes in our eagerness to help those, we are actually enforcing a systemic poverty and um, other problems uh, on those who we are desiring to help. So um, if you want to come to that and uh, did not sign up, it's still um, available. Um, we'll meet in Fellowship Hall at 7 o'clock. Um, if any of you watching online would like to participate, we uh, have the ability to do it uh, hybrid. We're hearing that a lot lately, a hybrid model. We can set up a Zoom, um, and you can watch as well. Just let me know, and we will make sure that we get the information to you. I believe that is all of the announcements for the good of the order. Um, and so let us remember that um, as we experience blessing after blessing in our life, let us acknowledge the source that it comes from. Our closing hymn this day is, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Uh, the words will appear on the screen.
we go now from this place seeking God's wisdom, his wisdom as we strive to be his disciples, to be his hands and feet and heart in this community and beyond. We leave now strengthened and nourished by the meal that we have shared and the bond that we have in common with brothers and sisters all over the world. We go now to be God for this world, to be Christ's hands and feet. Go to love and to serve in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.